Outrocast. And whereabouts are you? Long Beach, Long Island, New York. Have you spent time out on Long Island? Long Island? Um, yeah. Let's see. I've been to I've been to five towns. Um, okay. I was on SNL um, eighty one, two, three, four. Yes. And uh, for like four seasons, um, never got to see anything. Never went to the Statue of Liberty because you're working. I was a writer on the show and a performer, so it's like eighty hours a week. Yeah. I got to Central Park, and that's about it. And uh, I did the Circle Line tour. So. <laughs> yeah, well, this town gave the world Billy Crystal. Wow. The five towns gave SNL a few people as well. But the the bottom line is this. I'm happy to be speaking with you because you've been associated with so many film and television projects that shaped me big time. Not just the Police Academy series, but Curb and SNL, the stuff that you did with Riser and, and Belushi. It's a fantastic career that you have slash had. And it's great to see that Scrooge and Marley is getting a 10 year anniversary kind of release. When did you find out about that? Uh, uh, Richard called me up a, a, a couple of months ago and said, they're, they're digging it up, Tales from the Crypt. They're gonna re-release a new, you know, tarted up version and uh but some special features and stuff and i went good for you uh because it was really a trailblazer of a thing there was nothing like it out there before so right. um, now it's kind of popular with hallmark and all of that stuff but uh you know it was um it was a pretty um pretty brave undertaking back when they they did it uh and they did it for like a dollar 95 i mean it's <laughs> Nobody was in it for the money. It's just to be doing it, you know. But it's a great cast so that the everyday person would not know that it's low budget. They would assume, hey, the money went to the cast right there. When you have people like Bruce Valanche and yourself, all that involved. What was it that drew you to this project in the first place? Was it the great script or did you know one of the producers? Uh, no, actually, it was, a pro it was through Richard Knight. Weirdly, I had lived in a building... Uh, at the corner of North and Wells in Chicago, mm -hmm. which was just a couple of doors, uh, literally two doors away from Second City. And Bruce Valance lived in the building. And I read oh. all of his stuff. This is before he moved out to LA and did all the you know, Academy Award stuff. And I was an, an ad man for Leo Burnett at the time. Oh. And uh, the first cast I saw at uh, Second City, which, and I was not, not in show business at, at all, was um, Belushi, um, Brian Doyle Murray. Wow. Um, um, who else from there? Eugenie Russ Lemming. Uh, Harold Ramis, my God. This that guy was just fucking amazing. Sure. Joe, uh, Joe Flaherty, who was a yeah. Pittsburgh boy. And um, I, I never knew that I would end up going to Second City to take a class to better pre present. I was so nervous, I couldn't sell my TV commercials. And somebody said, take a Dale Carnegie course and go to Second City. And I, I, I did it. And it was so much fun. And so, uh, you know, like about, and that was uh, 70, probably around 76 or 77. And uh, by that time, Valanche had gone to L.A. So I took a class there. And about a year later, they offered me a job um, at an 80 percent pay cut, I might say. So I'd be like, I'd be crazy to pass up this opportunity. So I had a few shekels in the bank. So uh, I, I did it. And uh, God, it was the, the most fun couple of years of my life. So uh, but then so there's a, an old bar called uh, the Green Mill uh, mm -hmm. in Chicago. That's where I think they opened Capone's vault at one time. And there was a, like a speaking and it was a great hang. I, I love that area. I love the bar. And they had great jazz. Uh, but they have like a, a night where you, everybody can get up and, and just speak and talk and tell funny stories. And I was doing that and I ran into Richard and he was very funny. So we, out of the blue one day, he asked me to, to do this movie. I went, yes, and. So I, I and plus, uh, this is such a great town for theater. Mm -hmm. uh, still any, is. Yeah. yeah, it still is. And so pretty much anytime somebody's doing something that sounds like fun or I like, I'm going to, I'm there, I'm going to, I'm going in for it. So I'm happy to help. Uh, and it was really, really fun doing it. We had, we had a blast. Yeah. What you said about the pay cut going from ad agency kind of stuff into comedy, the 
The only other person I could think of who had that path was George Wallace. Did you ever speak to him about that? No, no. Um, but I remember getting a call from, no, this is going to be, uh, okay. First off, Father Guido Sarducci. Oh, yeah. Well, also yeah. worked at Burnett. But then after I worked at Burnett, um, was, um, okay, who did the, the director who died in New York, who did um, all the modern movies? John Hughes. John yeah. Hughes called me up from, from Second City and said, how did you, how did you, because by that time I'd, uh, I'd written on my, my body, I was a kind of a ghostwriter on my bodyguard and, and, um, and uh, mo a movie I wrote for seven years called Sexual Perversity in Chicago, which when it finally got made, they couldn't even use that title because the network said it's so salacious. Um, they had changed it to About Last Night. Yeah. And I could, I could not even remember that title. I had to write it on a piece of paper because it was so amorphous. I said, what's the na new name of the movie? I said, shit, I got to look it up again. <laughs> About Last Night. But um, it turned out pretty well. Uh, and um, it was actually a big hit. And so I got a screenwriting career for 20 years out of that, so. Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, when they said, do you want to speak to Tim Kazarinsky? They're like, police academy legend. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's the thing that you say no. about Tim? No. <laughs> yeah, it, I put you and Bobcat in that same kind of thing where you go like, that is the least, as much as I love Police Academy movies and grew up on them, it's like yeah. the least credible thing that you did of all this, like this Emmy winning, Oscar nominated ish kind of career. I once sat next to a, uh, on a plane going out to, for, for the, a meeting about the sequel for about last night, sitting next to Paul Newman in first class. <laughs> Clearly, I didn't buy the ticket. I did not bother him till the, the food came and he said, how's the chicken? I went, I said, I'm not going to tell him. I'm an actor too. Perhaps you saw Police Academy 3 or 4. No, I, I literally pretended I was still in the ad business just not to fuck him up. So, uh, But I remember him telling me, he said, that uh, he said, you'll always be known for the... Um, the worst thing you do in your career, which was his, his head like a some sword and sandal. Uh, I forget the name of the movie, but uh, yeah, so that is with, with the, the police academy stuff. And Bobcat, whom I met and who's the most, to this day as a friend, mm -hmm. uh, he, he lives in Chicago now. So um, oh. we get to see each other quite a bit. Yeah, his girlfriend's dad uh, is near end of life. So he said, let's move back so you can be with your dad. So. He's here, so it's great. Get to hang with Bobcat. But, you know, he's much more than his Police Academy movies. He's Yeah. His, his did, greatest, you see, did you see World's Greatest Dad? I saw World's Greatest Dad. I saw that documentary he just did with Dana Gould. Oh, that's great. That's two. And also the one he did for um, the, the stand-up comedian, The Lucky... Oh, the Luckiest Man Alive or something like that? Lucky... Shit, I got the book here somewhere. Uh... But he was the guy who um, found it's kind of the Boston comedy scene. Oh, um, Barry. Barry Crimmins. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and it, weirdly, Barry Crimmins asked me to marry him to his girlfriend so she could get WGA coverage for her cancer. And then she got better and he died six months later. Uh, but uh, that's it's a wonderful movie This is, we did for... Uh, for Barry Crimmins uh, before he died. It was, it's, it was a beautiful thing. But he's a, he's a, a really great movie maker. So, so putting it all together, if you put all the talent of the Police Academy cast together, when I say what you're capable of, what Bobcat's capable of, Michael Winslow, it is, is it the most underutilized cast in the history of comedy? Yes and no. Uh, yes, uh, artistically and creatively, but ev everybody's got to pay rent and everybody's got to make it. They got a kid they got to put through school. Sure. I got two of them. And uh, seeing as how Lauren Michaels never reran our SNL episodes, not one, I thought, well, shit, I got to get, I got to pay for those kids' college somehow. But so I, but also George Gaines. Mm -hmm. Please believe me, George Gaines from Tootsie, uh, and he had he had Punky Brewster. Yeah, that guy, 
that man was so funny and so droll. I'm telling you, hilarious guy. I, God, I just would hang out with him. He would make me laugh so fucking hard. I remember one time walking by a, the chair of a director and he had a writing prop under his arm and he's walking by the director's chair and we were all sitting around. And as he walked by the chair, he just took this writing prop out, slapped the chair and went, and he just said, hasn't a clue and just proceeded on his way. <laughs> but it was, and that was they, they were a great hang too. They really, I mean, when we go and shoot another one, I knew I'm going to get to hang out with all these people for eight weeks. We had a blast doing, really. Um, so, and of course, they paid for my house. So. Uh, <laughs> well, well, back back to you, you know, Scrooge and Marley. Scrooge and Marley, it's, yeah. It's the 10th anniversary. It's great. That's that. But what are you up to at the moment? And I say that because being not just an actor, but a successful screenwriter, producer i think there's a few director credits in your cv as well you never know if imdb is up to date or correct on people so i've just gotten back to writing uh which i haven't done for uh, quite some time i said uh, okay this is enough i gotta i need a creative outlet so i'm i am writing again um an old friend of mine greg Gliana, who wrote the original um meet the parents Oh, and and shot and believe it or not, shot it with emo. I think some studio bought it, burned it, and they redid it with um, Ben Stiller and De Niro and Stiller. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, not my favorite movie. Uh, to me, it's it was broad and you know, Midnight Run with Midnight Run with Charles Grodin and De Niro. That's yeah. a fucking funny movie. Yeah. Uh, and but. Anyway, um, Greg, who had done Meet the Parents, and Emo Phillips, my buddy, was uh, the lead in that version. Uh, and I, I love Emo. He's a real... Yeah, one of yeah, the all-time greats. Uh, he's, he's great. We just lost Judy Tenuta, too, which is yeah. really, really sad. They were married, which a lot of people didn't know. Yeah. Um, that's quite a combination there with her with her squeeze box and Emo with his Prince Valiant hair. Um, but both both lovely, lovely people. Um, so he did a movie about it's called Road Dog. And uh, he just called up and said, um, somebody crapped out of this thing. Could you help me out? I played a, a comedy club manager. To, um, it's a the movie's about an alcoholic stand up comedian, which is already your department of redundancy department. <laughs> so uh, and the guy in the lead was Doug Stanhope. Uh, oh wow! And I God, I had I didn't know about him, and then Bobcat told me about him. Bobcat was going to do a day on uh, on the movie because somebody else crapped out, and then couldn't because he got COVID. So, um, but I've not seen it. But uh, I, I really like the script, and I really like Doug Stanhope. Man, I was unfamiliar with his comedy, but he's uh, you know um, he's really edgy, really out there. I, I like him a lot. So. His, his a police academy equivalent is the fact that he and Joe Rogan hosted the reboot of The Man Show in the early 2000s on Comedy Central that people yeah. kind of loathed. And then you yeah. obviously look at the careers that Stan Hope and Rogan had after that. It's pretty far buried in, in terms of all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Right. Um, so, so Road Dog is the, the final name. Road Dog is the, is the name of it. And um, I just heard from Greg, he said that they, uh, that they were taking it to um, Sundance because they had screened it. And he said that he, he loves the finished product. So um, I don't know what's what's going to happen. But and there was another little movie, uh, Lauren Lapkus. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, she and her, she's from Evanston here. And the, 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 her friend wrote the screenplay and Lauren is starring in it and co-producing it. So, and it's, it's about postpartum depression. So um, I did a, a day on that because I read my, and it's a low budget SAG thing. They're all low budget SAG things. So my agent says, you're not gonna wanna do this. And, then, and I said, send me the script. So I read the script, it was a nice script. I said, I said, I hate to break your heart, but I'm going to do this thing. So, and we're not going to charge him anything more than the SAG, SAG rate because 
they're doing it for a buck and a quarter. So, so that little things, I don't know when that's going to come out too. So I do a little bit here and there, wherever I can. We're out and, so um, the bottom line is you'll work if it's interesting and on your terms and on your schedule, Tim will do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in it for, at this point for the funny, not the money. The house <laughs> is paid off. So um, yeah, but that's the whole ethos of Chicago theater. There's so many little black box theaters here and, and people are putting stuff up and, uh, you know, at least I can go, you know, watch it. Even though I can't be in a show. Uh, I can't really be gone for six weeks to do that. But um, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad to still be in the Midwest. I'm glad I managed to live here and have three careers and do it all without ever living in Los Angeles. <laughs> I don't blame you. But the bottom line is this. Huh. I'm looking forward to whatever is coming next from you, whether you're on screen, whether you're behind the camera, whatever it is. Tim, you made a difference. You're still making a difference. And thank you. Well, thank you. By the way, there's one movie that I did. I don't know if you're, you were ever seen it. Uh, I did it in, in Liverpool for ITV, which is out of business now. Uh, no, it's not, I, I was IT, it was Granada. Oh, which Granada, was, yeah. yeah. Granada, which I think was um, instituted by Sephardic Jews and it was a great studio. And for their factual drama department, I did this movie called Strange Relations, mm -hmm. uh, with Paul Reiser and uh, Julie Walters. Mm -hmm. and Julie Julie Walters plays the mother. And it was based on a, a true story about a guy who gets leukemia and is going to die. And then his wife, his mother confesses that he was adopted. And if he goes back to England where they got him, he could track down to see if there's any siblings. Uh, and um, what happened in real life is there were no siblings. And um, Granada said, what if there were? What, where would it have gone? And I, I love this idea. Because as a, I grew up in Australia, and as a kid, I spent a year in an orphanage, and both my kids are adopted. Uh, so I really, I really wanted this job, and I fought hard to get it. And it turned out to be a wonderful film. And Julie Walters won the BAFTA for her performance. So if you can find Strange Relations, I think it's a, a, a nine dollar Amazon video. Uh, but she, she won the. I got a BAFTA nomination. I, but I didn't win, but it's okay. <laughs> nice to be well, invited. That's that's why we call you BAFTA, or we say award nominated, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> it, all it takes is one award. Doesn't matter what award it is, but in your case, it's a prestigious one or two. Yeah. Well, also, uh, we were nominated every year for an Emmy, and yeah. we never won. So, but and so off nominated, never, never win. But it's okay. It's fine. More, that's, that's more nominations than me. That's more nominations than 99% of the people who will see this. That's the bottom line. I am still the luckiest man in show business because I, first I had, had no, no training, uh, except I, I knew how to type. Um, and I've met the most interesting, fascinating people and had the most wonderful time and friends. Um, yeah, it's, um, I can't believe all the shit I got to do and see and the people I got to meet. And, and yeah, it's been a great, a great life. And still doing it. And hanging in. Yeah. Hanging <laughs> in. Well, Tim, thank you for your time. Best of luck with the next interview. Hopefully I only ask three or four of those five questions. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to look up that movie. Thank you. Thank you. And my love to um, Long Island. Outro cast.